Well, I want to wish Abilene Christian the best this season. Uh, I think the best compliment that I can give those guys is how focused our guys were tonight. We set this game up, in our opinion, as the best team that we had played in the non-conference at home. No disrespect to the other opponents. This team was 9-1 and one for a reason. They got a veteran team. Joe's done a great job with his team, Brett and Trilly and Ted and those guys. Um, we'll be pulling for them the rest of the season. We played great tonight, um, but our guys were dialed in. I think they understood that Abilene Christian was coming in here to beat us. I think that's the best compliment that I can give uh, Abilene Christian. I want to thank our fans. You know, once again, Red Raider Nation, they never disappoint. With our students not being in town, we, we have uh, what appeared to be an almost sellout situation. From the uh, dance team to the cheerleaders to the band, season ticket holders came in full force. Just uh, It's always humbling how good our fans are to us. Um, you know, tonight was all about showing respect to all the great players and coaches that came before us. Last night I couldn't sleep because I was worried to death about Abilene Christian. I just Googled this Coliseum and some of the black and white pictures that pop up are amazing. Like the building looks the same and dirt parking lot, no Marsha Sharp, no campus there, a couple horses in the background. So, um, you know, there was a real, uh, real feeling around our program the last two days. And I hope that anybody that was watching out there um, thought that we played well tonight. And the reason we tried to play one of our best games of the season is we have so much respect for everybody that played and competed and participated in events in this building. Jared, was there something about you being from Lubbock and, and uh, sorry, and just the, uh, the way you played tonight, obviously you're feeling it 12 out of 13. Was it just special for you to be in this college summer, or was it just a good shooting night? Uh, yes, it was special. This is, was a very historic game for us, so we just came out and did it for all the people that played before us and all the coaches, and it's a lot of history behind it, so we wanted to end it on a good note. It's just, Jared, I guess what were you able to do in that first half? I know you had a bunch of good screens from your teammates, but I guess what were some other things that kind of allowed you to kind of do what you did in that first first half? Uh, my teammates got me open a lot, sending a lot of good screens and good passing, and it was great spacing on the court tonight. So I just got going early and didn't look back. Matt, I guess just from your perspective, I guess what do you do when you kind of see a teammate like that just kind of get, 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 on, get on a roll? Yeah, you just get him the ball. Just let him take over the game. He's got the ability to just take over a game and – put together a couple bu buckets in a row. He's a real, real special player, and it's fun to watch when he gets it going like that. Jared, and I forgot if I asked you before, have you played in here before? Uh, last year, but that's about last it. Year. I guess, so, so, so what's so special about it to you, just being a Lubbock native, being able to kind of play in a, in a venue like this? Uh, just how it's the last time anybody's going anybody's gonna to play in here, so that's very special to end it and being a part of this with this team. So we just wanted to end it on a special note like th tonight. Jared, obviously you had a really good game, but Mooney, looking at how you lead the team at the point, opening up things for the rest of your teammates, how has this transition been facing a little bit harder team today and making sure that you contribute to this team as a new player? Yeah, today I, I wasn't great. Uh, a lot of turnovers, not too many assists. That's something I'll get in the film room and I'll clean that up. But it's been a smooth transition. You know, the coaches uh, you know, have put me in a position to be successful, and uh, I'm just going to get in the film room and keep improving. Culver, from a player perspective, do, coach said you guys played the best game today, but do you feel as a player, you guys as a team, did everything you could to prepare yourself for this upcoming game, kind of closing the gaps that you maybe needed to and were practicing on? Uh, I feel like we always prepare. I feel like we're one of the most prepared team in college basketball to a great coaching staff. They always have us ready. So it, it's on us when we go out to play as hard as we can. So, I mean, we just focus on putting 40 minutes together. We haven't been playing a whole game great like we could, but tonight we came out and tried to focus on that. Any other questions for the players? All right, great job, guys. Shoot. I'm going to step out this way. Sorry. Yo. Hi. Questions for Coach Beard? No. Coach, I know you talk about it. Uh, I guess, do you feel like you all played at least close to 40 minutes today? Yeah, I just told the guys in the locker room, I thought with my naked eye, without watching film, it felt like 33 to 34 minutes. Um, had a couple stretches in the second half where it just got away from us. There's a fine line when you get that lead. You know, you want to play with some patience, um, but you want to keep attacking. Um, I give ACU a lot of credit. That's a team that's got no quit. It's a direct reflection of how Joe was as a player. Now he's always been as a coach. He's a competitive guy. He's no quit in those guys. Um, but yeah, I would agree with you. One of our better games. We got to get to the full 40 at some point to win in the 12. Um, but tonight, I thought we played about 34 minutes, but as well as we could play.
Just in terms of Jared, what, what did you like from him just in terms of just that dunk that kind of started it off? Did you feel like that set a tone for you all? Well, I like when a guy takes 13 shots, Carlos, and he makes 12. Uh, 12 of those shots that he made are the ones that I work with him on, and the one he missed, Mark Adams, has been spending time with him after practice, so really it's, it's Adams' fault. No, no, it was a special night. I think when those kind of things happen, the, the thing that I think about is the teammates. You know, Jared gets 13 shots tonight because his teammates are smart enough and aware enough and – unselfish enough to know it's kind of his night. So you got to give the guys that set the screens, the guys that made the assist passes that led to the assist. But I thought any time a guy goes for 30 or something like that at this level, there was a lot of his teammates, you know, uh, contributing to that. Then I love the low turnover game. He's got the ball in his hands that much. I think he only had one turnover, and it's just kind of a casual play late in the game. You talk about getting to that 40 minutes. What's left to improve and finally put it all together? It's just consistency. It's like each guy playing their best. Um, you know, I, I think Matt played great tonight. He shoots 60%, gets three steals. He has a five turnover game. A couple of them are just basketball plays. So he's our playmaker. He's a guy that's going to have some turnovers from time to time. But thought we had three guys in double figures, fourth guy right there. If it wouldn't have been such a big lead, we probably would have got another guy in double figures. So it's just the consistency of what we're doing, just trying to play, play the game, play each possession, not the scoreboard. And I thought for the first time tonight, I really felt that in a home game. I felt like nobody was looking at the scoreboard. Um, a lot of coaching going on within the team tonight. Whenever players are talking to other players, player accountability, you know, that's what it takes to win at this level. Culver's game is what could even improve more, even though he played really well tonight? Oh, Jared could always improve defensively and just reading the defense and things. Uh, but that's, that's what this game is. Uh, LeBron would probably say the same thing. He can play better. I know we always feel like we could coach better. Uh, it's the greatest thing about basketball. You're always looking for perfection from a playing standpoint, a team standpoint, a coaching standpoint. You're never going to quite get it, but you can come close. You know, I think one time with our Angelo State team, we had a one turnover game. Kid stepped on the baseline when I told him not to, but um, how you doing out there, Tacoby? Uh, but, you know, you're always looking for perfection. You're never going to quite get it, but that's what you strive for. Coach, I saw you got pumped up at uh, Norrence's dunk. Can you talk about uh, his play? I saw him. He was real scrappy out there today. Yeah, I mean, I love Norrence. I, you know, I never get tired talking about Norrence. I, I don't want to want to be one of these coaches that says great things about him at the banquet. I want to enjoy the ride. Tell our players all the time, it's not the destination, it's the journey. And uh, that's how I feel about coaching Norrence. Seeing that guy go through the uh, adversity he's gone through with the injuries, um, he's just a guy I pull for. No, nobody plays harder in college basketball than Norch. See a guy like that diving on the floor up 20, it just uh, excites me. I always kind of think if I could get everybody playing as hard as Norch plays, we could be really good. Coach, uh, on a night when you guys are celebrating the history of the program, what does it mean to you personally to be 10-0 and for the first time since 1929-1930 season? Yeah. I, no disrespect to the other teams. The 10-0 and really doesn't mean much to me. We're just trying to get ready for the next game on the schedule. But I think any time that we're mentioned with some of the other great teams, uh, you no know, special having Tony Petit in the locker room with our guys just a second ago. Got amazing text messages all week from former players and coaches, not just guys that I coach, but guys from the Coach Dickey generation, Coach Myers generation, some of Tubby's players. So, um, you know, I, I think any kind of success that we have, early season or as the season goes on, I hope that all former Red Raiders take some pride in this. Um, you know, a lot of people paved the way for us to have the kind of program we have today. You know, the USA would have never existed if there weren't good teams and good coaches in this building. Uh, the Womble would have never existed if there were some guys that didn't quite get it done, you know, get it done the last 15, 20 years in the USA. So um, we really want to, you know, we want to represent a lot of people when we play. Chris, obviously this building's old and uh, and it, it can't happen anymore, but would you have liked to have played a, uh, a Big 12 opponent, you know, a real high-level conference game in here where, where every seat is taken and, you know, the noise, it's so noisy and you have uh, everybody right on top of the opponent? Absolutely. I mean, me personally, I, I love the old gyms. Like, uh, when I go recruit, if there's an old gym, first thing I want to do is see the old locker rooms, like the Hoosiers underneath the floor. Um, I came over here the other day and just spent some time and walked around with Liz and went to the auditorium and thought about seeing Don Williams there years ago. Walked in here, thought about seeing Willie Nelson, thought about all the great games. Um, thought about the Texas teams that Coach Penders brought in here and those Coach Dickey wars. Thought about all the stories Bubba Jennings had told me about this arena. Thought about coming to hockey games. When Coach Adams had the hockey team, I'd bring the girls over here when they were little dollar beers. It was great. Um, 
no, no offense to Cap Rock, but Dollar Beers always beats that. But, um, but no, it was special, and I, I thought I was going to come up with something cool, like find a good old sign or something, and I, I found this classic old leather couch I think has to exist from the Gerald days, and I've got it over at the office now. Um, but, yeah, I'm just, uh, I love old gyms. I love to hear the stories about this. Um, you know, we picked ACU for a reason. I'm very, very appreciative of Joe playing this game. He didn't have to. Um, obviously, you know, we got no running water in their locker room. A lot of things ACU had to do to make this game possible. Um, I'm really appreciative of the ACU fans that came out. I coached at Abilene Christian. It's a school that I always pull for. I have a lot of pride in that city and my time at ACU with Shannon Hayes. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, this, this is special. I, personally, I wish we wouldn't tear it down, uh, but that's not my decision. Coach, you preach, you know, celebrate this one, but on to the next one come tomorrow. How do you coach emotion in the next couple of days with you guys being 10-0 and 0, but Duke coming up on the horizon as well? It's kind of a non-issue with our guys because we got these seniors, these four seniors. They know that 10-0 and 0 doesn't mean much. We'd much rather win our last 10 games. You know, that means you're going to win the Big 12 tournament, the national championship. So um, with some younger teams, I worry about things like this. But with these four seniors leading this team and Jarrett Culver being a best player type guy, um, you know, I got a lot to worry about with the next game on the schedule and a Hall of Fame coach and NBA players. Um, I don't worry much about our guys not being focused. Coach, you had the, a special moment with Kyler after that uh, pass to Odiase for the slam. What, what were you? Was it something that just switched that you saw that uh, a, a, the play that you? Yeah, played? Kyler spent a lot of time in the film room trying to improve his game, trying to change his game. He's been a guy that's always been able to score the ball at every level. Since he was five to high school to AU, he's an explosive scorer. I think to play at the next level is it, it, where he wants to play and to be the kind of player he wants to be here, he's got to continue to develop into a point guard that makes other people better. He, he's putting in the time, and it's always great as a coach when you finally see all the time and work behind the scenes translate to an action in a game. So that was a pick and roll play where he turned down a shot himself and got his teammate a high percentage shot, had great body language. I love it when Kyler smiles when he's having fun out there. Um, so, yeah, that was a highlight from tonight. I'm proud of the young guy. Coach, uh, just uh, for you, I guess, what, what do you kind of feel is going to be the lasting memory for you? I know, obviously, giving it a, a victory in the last game is obviously a good one. But I guess for you, what, what's your lasting memory of this of this venue? You know, time will tell on that. But I know the other day, uh, being over here with Coach Myers and doing some interviews with uh, some of you guys, um, you know, when Coach got a little emotional, talking about his memory of looking out the floor one time when he just became the head coach and it kind of sunk in. I got emotional watching Coach get emotional. But, uh, you know, uh, my relationship with Coach Myers and my friendship with him is at the top of the list of anything that's happened to me in my career. It's just been special. Coach walks the fine line. He's a coach. He helps us, but he never kind of crosses that line where he does too much. And that's hard to hard to walk. I was watching my middle daughter, Ella, play basketball last night, and I don't walk that line very well, you know, trying to be a parent. But I'm trying to get her back on defense so we can win the game. But Coach Myers has been great to us, our players, our coaches. Um, we love it when he's around. And so I think uh, time will tell what my best memory is. But I don't think I'll ever forget Coach Myers sitting on that floor a couple of days ago and getting emotional talking about his love at Texas Tech.